good evening everybody first of all i would like to thank uh, dr veena and dr venkatesh uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity and the excellent uh, hospitality i have been having since yesterday uh, coming to the iol power calculation uh, we all know that pediatric cataract is not a simple adult cataract uh, there are technically the surgery is more difficult not only that you are trying to implant a fixed power lens into a eye which is still growing means the refraction is changing every day or every month so there comes the challenge so what are the factors which uh, challenge uh, complicate this decision process of selecting the proper implant is one is the uh, first is a set of good measurements uh, difficulty in obtaining precise measurements and second is a calculation so with respect to the precise measurements we have difficulty in respect to obtaining a good uh, keratometry readings the axial length and the anterior chamber depth measurements and while calculating we all know that all the iol formula have been designed based on adult data so these don't fit for the pediatric eyes and the other uh, complicating factor is that the refraction is changing every month or every few months so again the calculations will go haywire so coming to the actual uh, measurements uh, keratometry we always need a handheld keratometer because obviously you cannot put a baby on in front of a normal auto k so you need to do it probably under anesthesia just before the surgery and uh, it's important to uh, check both the eyes even if you are doing uh, surgery for only one eye uh, errors in the axial length actually are very significant because each millimeter of error can contribute to 2.5 doctor of change in the iol power and in hyperopic in short eyes it may almost go to 3.75 so it's very very important to get a accurate uh, measurement of the axial length and if you see here in the first 6 months the axial length increases rapidly about almost 0.62 millimeters per month and the next 6 to 18 months it's about only 0.19 and po post 18 months onwards it's a little slower phase so in the first 18 months it's really important to get a very accurate uh, i will also excellent measurements so the methods of measuring the axial length of course we know optical biometer is the gold standard now uh, if the child can cooperate for that that is the best thing to do if it is not possible then we have to rely on the ultrasound uh, uh, method and in that again we have the aplanation and the uh, immersion methods immersion is definitely more accurate than the aplanation method but uh, however it requires a little more uh, technical uh, this thing challenge and uh, it should be done under anesthesia again so uh, as you see here uh, there is almost about 0.24 to 0.32 mm difference between the immersion and the aplanation method and it's important not to uh, indent the cornea if you are doing with the aplanation method so again while choosing the scan you have to be careful you have to choose a scan which has uh, a anterior lens uh, this thing uh, the spike should be almost about 90% of the maximum height and the posterior should be at least uh, 50 to 70% and the retina echo should be 75% or more of the maximum height and this orbital echo should uh, descend quickly otherwise you may be imaging on the optic nerve again coming to which formula to use Uh, again as i said all the formulas are designed based on other adult data uh, there have been lot of conflicting reports even in the literature and as you see here uh, wasavada et al had uh, concluded that srk t and holiday 2 are the best formula for children whereas kekunoya feels uh, srk 2 gives the least predictive error and is uh, better to be used in uh, pediatric cataracts Uh, there is also a pediatric iol calculator which was available on uh, aapos website so basically it's a uh, software computer software program uh, which uh, attempts to predict the refraction of a child as he grows using the holiday algorithm so basically they have obtained the refraction measurements for uh, from pediatric afiki guys and that has been fe fed into the software and this is how it looks like uh, suppose if you input the age of the child uh, the k1 k2 and the axial length so you will get the approximate the iol power if suppose if you want a immetropic i today this is the power to be implanted and if you want immetropy at the age of 2 years you have to implant this power you will also calculate the immetropic iol power suppose if you have a goal of refraction of 2 uh, at the at that moment and at the age of 2 uh, years if you want 1.5 so this is the iol to be implanted or if you put a particular power of iol what will be the uh, refraction at the age of 2 years so all these things are given in this pediatric iol calculator uh, once you calculate the immetropic power what power of the lens to be implanted is again a challenge because as we all know 
the uh, eyes of the child fr grows from 16.8 millimeters at birth to 23.6 as an adult and most of this growth occurs in the first uh, 18 months of life. So we are actually removing this uh, crystalline lens before the complex process known as the emetropization. So in a normal adult, a normal child, uh, we have only about uh, 0 0.9 diopter change, refractive change from a uh, infancy to adulthood, whereas in a child who has a pseudophakia or an eye, the change is almost about uh, 10 diopters. So that's where uh, the challenge lies in calculating the power, uh, correct power of the eye oil. So basically we use three major approaches. One is to aim at an initial uh, hypermetropia. Second is to either go for an initial emetropia and third you can actually go for a low hypermetropia. So, we will just see what are the advantages and disadvantages of each, each of these approaches. So, suppose if you go for an initial hypermetropia, uh, it offers the uh, advantage that as an adult the child will not require any glasses, the child will be near normal. But however, this has a great, great disadvantage because you are producing a high hypermetropia in the initial years of life when actually you need to tackle amblyopia. So, amblyopia may become a big problem in this uh, approach. If you go for an initial emetropia, it definitely it simplifies the battle against amblyopia, your, your, uh, your visual results will be good. But as a child, you will end up, uh, as adult, uh, you will end up with a very high myopia. So that is the disadvantage of this approach. And that's why most people go for a uh, intermediate approach wherein you probably aim for a low hypermetropia. So in this uh, condition, you can uh, give a spectacle correction or a contact lens initial few years for the low hypermetropia they, uh, you have created. But the battle against amblyopia will be easier in this. And of course, you may end up with a small myopia as an adult. There are some other factors which also influence the decision such as the age at the time of uh, surgery. So suppose the younger the child you are operating more difficulties means you have to give a higher under correction, almost about 20 percent under correction has to be done in this uh, age group. And uh, this is the present uh, AO recommendation. Uh, suppose if you are implanting at a age of uh, 1 to 2 years, you under correct by 6 uh, diopters. This is the recommendation given at present. There is also a NAD rule of 7. Uh, you add age plus the target hypermetropia, it should uh, come to 7. Suppose if you are operating a 3 year old child and your target refraction is 4, then the total is 7. So, uh, on the other way, you can also calculate that 7 minus the age gives the target hypermetropia you need to uh, achieve. Status of the fellow is important because if the other eye is uh, having a pseudo fakia or if it is a unilateral cataract, then the, if the other eye has a high refractive error, then you should balance such that you do not produce a inosarconia. Suppose if the other eye is a high myopia, then you have to accordingly adjust the um, power of the lens to be implanted. Visual acuity again as I said, denser the amblyopia, you have to aim at a emetropia because otherwise it is very difficult to correct the amblyopia, patching everything becomes a challenge. So we always try to go to more towards the emetropia if it is a very dense amblyopia even if, if it is a monocular cataract. Uh, expected compliance because many of the cataracts, pediatric cataracts happens in a low socioeconomic status. So you also need to see the family background whether these uh, parents and the children will cooperate for glasses, contact lenses and occlusion therapy. So depending on that you have to adjust the power of the lens that you need to implant. A parent's refractive error is also important because if the parents are myopic, we have seen that if uh, both parents are myopic, 30 to 40 percent of their children also become myopic. And if only one parent is myopic, 20 to 25 percent. And if neither of the parents are myopic, only 10 percent of them become myopic. So accordingly, you have to adjust the power of the lens to be implanted. Uh, eye oil power, in, in general, the higher the power of the eye oil, more is the under correction necessary. Suppose in a, uh, for example, in a one month old child, if one child has a emetropic power of 50 diopters, another has a emetropic power of 40, then the first one you will have to deduct more than the second one. And again, the site of fixation. So all this uh, we calculate for in the bag implantation. Uh, suppose if you are putting into the sulcus for any reason, either you didn't get a good rexus or you need to put an iris claw lens or any other changes, then accordingly you have to change the power of the eye oil. So summarizing, uh, eye oil power calculation in children, first you do a good uh, axial length measurement and uh, keratometry which is the most important. Then you uh, calculate the power of the emetropic eye oil necessary. Depending on that, again you 
plan for the under correction, how much of under correction to be done depending on the age of the child, the status of the other eye, visual acuity and the assume compliance to glasses and the family history of refractive errors and you arrive at the final power of the lens to be implanted. So in conclusion, even though uh, adult biometry there has been a lot of uh, progress uh, including the latest generation uh, uh, optical biometers, uh, the pediatric chiral calculation still remains an enigma and there is still no ideal uh, IOL formula for calculating the pediatric uh, IOL power and poor cooperation and changing refractive status are the main barriers for accurate biometry. Thank you.